just here at Arigna Mines. Um, I've got a Jerry that's going to show me around. Um, he's just shown me part of the museum. I'm going to put a clone across the top. And that is north. An example of the sort of cramped conditions that the coal mines would have to put themselves through on a daily basis. Jerry's just going to simulate what it was like when the explosion went off. So he's going to make it totally dark in here. And we're going to get rid of Hey, doing everyone just here now. Uh, this is just a perfect example of a team working uh, to get to extract some of the, some of the trains. Originally, the, uh, the coal would have been carted with the. Uh, and welcome to Air Rider. My name is Ben. Thank you very much for joining me on today's video. We're going to be at, uh, well, we're here at Arigna Mines. Really looking forward to this. Special thank you to the team here at Arigna Mines for making this video happen. Uh, I'm delighted to be here and again, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, it's set in a fantastic area of Arigna, uh, which is close to Kiju and it's in the Kilrona Mountains. And you've got uh, an overlooking view here of uh, Loch Allen. I believe and uh well i'll spin the camera around now this is the sort of view that you can expect from up here so uh not only is it a museum but uh, a really fantastic site uh, generations have worked these mines um i'll put some information there in the description as well uh but uh yeah generation of workers mines many in the local area uh, the esb which is the supply board here in ireland built a power station in uh, 1958 i believe and um and Arigna supplied obviously the main the main uh, coal um i think they were saying there's something like 55,000 tons of coal was mined that supplied the uh the the, the mine but as the uh, the high grade uh, coal uh, ran out uh, in 1990, it closed down, and um, the mine closed. And then in 2003, there was an initiative to make the uh, place a museum, and uh, that's exactly what happened. The community came together, uh, part funded from the community, um, and they uh, opened the museum here in 2003 and um, it's really been a, a success as far as I'm concerned. The, the detail inside the museum is fantastic. I'm really looking forward to show it to you guys. But uh, thanks for watching so far or enjoy the video and uh, we'll take a look inside. I'm gonna take a look at the museum here. And what you'll find in here is you'll find uh, some tools. You'll also find some of the rock, the material that, that, that was on the site. There's also a lot of history in this little section as well, so be sure to check it out. It is just before the tour starts, before you come through anyway. Those are the main, uh, that leads to the blue doors there in the background. That leads to the main mine. So you'd be wandering around here anyway, and you'd be able to absorb some of the uh, artifacts, some of the tools, and some of the history of the actual uh, mines. We've also got in the background there, we've got a uh, vein of coal, uh, which I'll show to you shortly. And there are various images of some of the workers here at the mine. So I'll just take you through that now. Uh, there's also a box of coal as well. It says hutch of coal. The hutch contains some of the last coal mine at Rock Hill Pit. Good quality original mine, always had a shine to it. So there are some of the images of some of the workers here. Uh, that's the entrance point where we just came through. And we've got more helmets here. Oh, yeah. There's a seam higher up. Oh, really? It's a soft petroleum oh, no. coal. Yeah. There's a carbon content of around 80 or 90 percent. So that's quite good. Okay. It's nearly there. 80 or 90 percent is nearly there. Wow. Um, what was the percentage? What, uh, was this, the, now, as you go down here, the quality goes down. Yeah. And that's called croco. 
Okay. That would have a high edge content of about 40 percent. The dead juice is consistent at about 10 degrees. 10 degrees Celsius, 50 Fahrenheit. Uh, our first stop was at the Sacred Heart picture. We said a prayer here that would be safe throughout the day, that we could help safe again in the evening. Yeah. And the same on the way out. Okay. He was our health and safety officer. How long was that there for then? That Pretty much since then. Prince from the mine would have opened for that one Okay. So yeah, it opened up more double slopes and more branches every 80 or 100 days. Okay, so these are the veins of coal yeah. and uh, running no, down. Th these are the Sorry. roads. These are the oh, right. branch roads. Okay, gotcha. The branch roads go into the coal face. Okay. And each of those is 11 meters apart. And the, the two miners I showed in the picture, yeah. the shoveler went up on his side halfway, shoving the coal down, and the other man came and met him halfway, lying on his side. Oh, wow. He shoveled up, you yeah. shoveled down. Yeah. And each miner was doing the same the thing along the road, and that was the good vein of coal. Okay. That was semi-bituminous coal, and had a carbon content of about 80 or 90 percent. Okay, so your black diamond, that was the superior coal. Yeah. Okay, and then like you were saying earlier, yeah. as you go down... As you the, go down, the, the quality goes down. Gotcha. And this is an inferior coal called Crow Coal. Okay. And it has a high ash content of about 40%. Good idea, fan on the top, so clean air up. Oh, wow. Now this is our we can take a picture of one. Oh, great. That's a, wow, you can feel the air going yeah. through here. Wow. Up, yeah. uh, was that motor generated? Yes. Okay, so... Very hot. in the shed. Uh, Jerry's just saying there that uh, this is one of the, the sort of air shafts that was feeding air through the mine, and um, there's a big motor up there at the moment. That's the temperature gauge that we never had. <laughs> 10 degrees Celsius. <laughs> hey guys, uh, this is a, an example of the sort of cramped conditions that the, the coal miners would have to put themselves through on a daily basis. Now, what Jerry was saying was that, um, like, for the first week or so, the first would it be the first couple of weeks or, or maybe the first week yeah. uh, the first week your body would be aching especially when you could be i mean there's, there's an example of what we're looking at so you can see it goes all the way down here that the man is probably quite stiff in his position he uses the pneumatic drill there's the uh the coal seam there and uh, you know it's a matter of his body just getting used to the conditions that's where we've just come from here so we're working our way down jerry's just taking me through here So this is still the main road. We were behind those oh, doors wow. a few minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. And this was the system we had for taking the coal out. It was an endless rope. It was like a fan belt. It's like a pulley, really. Yeah. yeah. If you're six or seven kilometers in, uh, 14 kilometers of rope. Yeah. So it's like a fan belt in a car, really. But um, so the same rope going out is coming in again. Yeah. And when we want to extend this into the mine, you took the frame and wheel down, you moved it forward. Oh, Every wow. 80 or 100 meters as the mine progressed. Okay. A man came in that knew how to splice the rope and he had it all the way out. But the man outside to start the engine, let out the clutch. Okay. And this went on from 8 o'clock in the morning oh, wow. to 12 at night. <laughs> yeah. so the first oh, shift, wow. 8 to 4, second shift, 4 to 5. So the same rope that's going out with the full hutches is coming in with the input. Gotcha. And the man that's there, he's working with that on. He's, he has a bear in his hand, he's taking off the empties, and if he has time, he's putting on the full ones in sets of two at least. Uh, we have no control here. So there were two tracks? Uh, two tracks. Were the two tracks in the, in the kind of main shaft then? In the main shaft. Right, yeah. okay, so there would be two tracks going around. Like no, there the might be sometimes in these ones. Hey guys, um, I was just showing me some of the, uh, the what's it, the buckets really, I suppose. Is the it? hutches. The hutches, yeah. Sorry, the hutches, yeah. And uh, they were all, they all had like tags on, which then associated to a certain, would that be a certain person? To the, to the drawer and the shoveler. To, to the drawer yeah. and the shoveler, so there'd be two people here. Um, and then obviously they would go onto a rain system, which is what we just saw just now. Uh, and then later on they manufactured a automatic uh, coal mining system, which we can see here. Um, and it would be pulled along. Obviously, they'd have to constantly move it. Winched, winched along, yeah. Winched. It'll be winched along, I suppose, that way, I suppose, yes. in relation to and the vein. And it's worked on three phase electricity. And it's worked on three phase electricity. Um, and then there's a, an iron bar, or, or more like a, I suppose it's a rail. A rail, yeah, that's right, that's probably the correct word. So the hardest man put it into the loop of the, of the rope, yep. and then he wedged it against the roof. Gotcha. And the other man had levers at the front. Well, he just controlled everything and it started spinning. Okay. And uh, the tension came on the rail as it wound yep. itself in and... And then it would pull itself along. 
effectively cutting out the pole. Now, this wall is, is, is the nearest component of the great right thing. You'll have to imagine the roof down as high. Yeah. You'll have to imagine no electric light, the electric ceased at the hauling system. From here on in, you were depending on the light sitting on your helmet. Okay. Now, there was rails coming up there on timber sleepers, but this is exactly how it was. The coal was there in front of you. So you went up in the morning, shoved her down your five and a half metres of coal, wow. sat out here with the boy and had your lunch or piece, kept your feet in so up the way. You never went up to go no, to lunch? No, too far out of your two mile in. Wow, okay. So you, you kept your feet in up the rails in case the stone fell on you, back in, shoveled out the other half. Wow. And you have that out your loud. You and then home. does that when you put the, the no. timbers in as well? Four o'clock in the evening, yeah, yeah, put in timbers as you took out the coal, yes. Now at four o'clock in the evening, a new shift comes, a rusher, and that's what greets him. The metre of coal is gone, and your job now is to get rid of that metre of Jerry was explaining to me in this area here, um, is the way they work the, the coal. So you've got the man digging the coal out here, and eventually you'd end up with this load of rock uh, at the top here. So what they would need to do is they need to uh, get this out so that it would eventually look like that. So um, what they would do is that obviously they need to use, uh, sorry, not dynamite, uh, they need to use explosives. Um, so they need to drill a hole, which is right over here, then insert the explosive there, uh, and then they would put a fuse in, depending on, he's, I think he was saying they're about three or four feet, I think it's a, a one foot per minute. Four sticks of jelly, mate, yes. Nitro, okay. Nitroglycerine, yeah. Okay, so uh, nitroglycerine is what they put in. They would then light it, everyone would obviously... Uh, Jerry's just going to simulate what it was like when the explosion went off, so he's going to make it totally dark in here, and we're going to hear an explosion. Here we go. Wasn't that fantastic? Um, <laughs> and then have to wait an hour uh, for the dust to settle. Obviously, sorry, not to settle, but uh, the, the dust and that would uh, be it would go shaft, yeah. up would go up the air shaft. Uh, then they would come in, scoop all the rock away, and then you'd end up with uh, so the coal seam down here, and then there's the rock face. Then perfectly perfectly smooth. Uh, Jerry was saying that, that they didn't have a lot of height in the actual mines, um, so he, he would call it luxury in relation to the height. So obviously they would have to be sort of, what would you be like, hunched over as you're yeah, coming in? Yeah, but the road would be four, four and a half foot high. The main well, road might be five. Uh, heading back okay. uh, to the main section here now. Um, this is the main shaft area, so that's where we entered from. And uh, when you came out of the mine after being in for three, four or five hours in semi-darkness and you hit the sunlight at one or two o'clock in the day, yeah. your eyes were very sore and tender for about five minutes. But you readjusted back into that daylight again. Hey doing everyone, just here now, uh, this is just a perfect example of a team working uh, to get to extract some of the coal. So we've got uh, a brusher. No, sorry, a shovel. Oh, sorry, uh, the shovel is at the back here. So he's the gent getting in all uh, all the coal from the actual seam itself, and then there's the drawer. the drawer, <laughs> and then there's the drawer who obviously piles in the coal into the hutch. Yes. There we go. Uh, and then later on, the, uh, the brusher comes in, and uh, his job is is to drill the rod and blast it. There we go. Which is what we what that example I uh, discussed earlier. So he comes in and he blasts the uh, the rock, and obviously takes it away. Would that be right? Uh, a few hundred go out, it's normally backfilled in each side. Oh, okay. I'm going to take a look at the museum here. And uh, what you'll find in here is you'll find uh, some tools, you'll also find some of the rock, the material that, that, that was on the site. There's also a lot of history in this little section as well, so be sure to check it out. It is just before the tour starts, before you come through anyway. Those are the main, uh, that leads to the blue doors there in the background, that leads to the main mine. So you'd be wandering around here anyway, and you'd be able to absorb some of the uh, artifacts, some of the tools, and some of the history of the actual uh, mines. So it goes in there, coal seams and ironstones, and then you've got some actual examples of some very nice history over here. So we've got coal and iron, wire rigna. The forces have moulded the Irish landscape, its geology, and and endowed Irigna with significant natural resources. So a lot of the iron, and you've got the mountain just uh, on the opposite side. That's the Iron Mountain, which we did a scenic drive uh, of, so be sure to check that video out. I'll put a link in the top right. Um, this whole area has got substantial iron and coal deposits. So you've got Bencroy mines on that side and you've got Irigna mines on this side. And we've got some uh, newspaper works. There we go, that's some of the history there, dating back as far as 1600. 
that's what we've got behind him. Uh, some of the tools that the miners would have uh, would have used. Obviously, you've got drill bits, you've got pneumatic drills. So, um, roughly 28 pounds in weight and is used for cutting coal. Uh, the jock is the hold for holding hutches on a hill. So that would have been uh, the the carts. And you've got something called a goose. It says used to drill uh, coal and slate. In the yards hold more from you for explosives. You've got knee pads obviously because you'd be on your knees a lot. And then you've got your battery lamps, the car bed lamps are the original lamps used in the mine. And there are different variations of that. And then the hand well. uh, What Jerry was saying when we did the tour in the mine, um, he was saying there that the how the the car bed lamp itself is is made. Effectively it's it's almost like it's like a rock you put into the actual carbide lamp. And then you mix it with water, and a chemical reaction uh, happens that creates the actual light. So it's not, um, you need a bit of flint as well. Sorry, there's a flint wheel there that creates it, and um, it creates light uh, using that reaction. And we've got a few of the bits here we've got the jackhammers, just behind that chair there, the greaser, electric switches, the water pump in the mine, sorry, a water pump used in the mine. It was also known as an Allen starter. We've got couplings, jib pins and uh, various other tools. Uh, what's behind me here is one of the sort of control panels that was originally put in uh, at the power station, which obviously Arigna Mines used to supply with coal. Obviously with that demolished, they've obviously put that in there for now. Uh, so you can obviously see that in the uh, museum. And then they've also got some uh, photographs which obviously show the power station in its prime. Uh, that appears to be some of the lanterns, various lanterns that we used at the mine. It's a collection of old rare mining lamps was kindly donated uh, in July 2020. It says formerly of the Irish Industrial Explosives Limited. Um, so it's an old collection of, of lamps. Wow. And then eventually we use trains here as well, which I'll go through. These are some of the railway uh, equipment that was actually manufactured here in Arigna, and you can actually make out Arigna uh, in this little section of wording here that were actually manufactured on site. Those are iron stones. And you can touch them as well. You pack them up. <coughs> It's like picking up a piece of uh, gym equipment. And some more photographs, some of the trains. Originally the, uh, the coal would have been carted with the uh, horse and cart. And then uh, obviously as technology became more available, um, it moved on to trains. Some of the more modern equipment that was used here at the Rigna. The miners and the coal seams. Yeah, so there we go. That's our horse and cart. It's one of the trains there at one of the sidings uh, at Arigna. And the coal train entering the Ballinamore station. And yeah, there's a siding there for the coal. Uh, Cabin Leitrim Railways. 1950s. The train engine. Here is the cafe, and we've also got a shop here as well. Beautiful view from outside, and uh, you can have a look. You can have a look at the shop and that. Have a cup of tea, and um, after your um, tour. How you doing everyone? We just finished the tour there and I tell you what, it's fantastic, it really is. You really have to make an effort to come down to the mines here in Roscommon. As I said, I'll put all the details in the description. Uh, the facilities here are really, are really good. The staff here are fantastic. The guides are fantastic. I spoke to both Michael and Jerry. Uh, Jerry's the one who took me on uh, the uh, initial tour and um, had a good um, chat there to Michael as well. So uh, the guys are very authentic. The place is very, very good. Uh, the people here are super friendly. Everyone from the, the welcome at the, at the main reception area and as you get through everyone is really here to, to make your experience fantastic. So really thank you very much for the opportunity. Special thanks to the Arigna Mines and the, the, the team 
uh, for allowing this uh, this video on my channel. And um, we're just finishing up with the museum here. So again, thank you all very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe down below. And um, I'll catch you on the next video.